story about a little boy who's waiting for spring, and his name is Simon. Let's see what Simon does to get spring. Simon welcomes spring, so he's on a swing. Is that something you do in the spring? Yeah. Oh, I think I have two pages. Okay. My name is Simon, and I love the spring. When the winter snow begins to melt, I go with my drum to welcome spring. He's going to drum for spring. I go to the garden to watch for flowers. When the leaves come out of the earth, I tie balloons on them to help them grow. Is that going to help them grow? Is, are balloons going to pull those out? No, that's not going to help. But the rains come down and wash them away. So the balloons didn't stay tied on, did they? I go to a tree and I ask the owl, how can I make spring come? And the owl says, wait a while, Simon. When the birds come back from their winter home, the trees will grow leaves and the flowers will bloom. Guess what I saw this morning? A whole bunch of grackles coming back from the south and the whole sky was full of blackbirds flying north because they were coming from the south and they were flying north. They're called They're, grackles? Uh, I can't, boat ta yeah, boat-tailed grackles. I think, I think, I am not a bird expert, but my husband said boat-tailed grackle, I think, and he knows. I climb a hill to welcome the birds. I build nests and Marlene brings houses. I blow on my flute to call the birds. They're trying to call the birds to come into those houses. Do you think the birds will hear that and come? No, probably not. They don't know how to talk bird talk. But the birds fly by. They don't even see it. Those birds are too big for the little houses they made. The birds that fly in V's are either ducks or geese. They're too big for those little houses. I go to a field and I ask the rabbit, how can I wake the sleeping bears? How can I tell them it's spring? Uh-oh, would you wake up a bear that was sleeping? Well, the rabbit says, wait a while, Simon. When the maple sap flows, the bears will wake. Did you know the maple sap is flowing right now? Yeah, the workers from the Nature Center are out collecting maple syrup right now. They're going to make lots and lots of maple syrup, and you can come have some. We're having a big pancake breakfast, and you can have some, or you can buy some. I go to the woods to get sap. So there he is. He's looking for some sap. Let's see if he finds any. Look, he put buckets on all the trees to catch some sap. You think he'll catch some? He might, we don't know, he might. But the trees are in water and I can't reach them. Oh, it's flooded. It flooded in Marshalltown too, didn't it? I sit alone and think to myself, I could not make the flowers bloom or the trees grow leaves or the birds return or the bears wake up. I could not make spring come. You can't find spring, but then one day spring came by itself and I went out with all my friends to welcome it. So even though today's the first day of spring and the sun is out, it's still a little bit chilly, isn't it? This book tells us how spring actually comes and what's the science behind it. So let's see. Why is it spring? What is spring? It's one of the four seasons. Do you remember the other seasons? Spring? Then what comes? Snow. <laughs> Good guess. Spring and then summer. Is that what you said? And then after summer comes? Fall. And then after fall comes? Winter. That's right. But they're in spring. See the beautiful flowers? So we're in spring now too. Why do we have seasons? The earth goes around the sun. It's kind of hard to see the sun. It's in the middle of this page, but there's the bright sun, and the earth is going around it. One trip around the sun takes one year. During that trip, earth tilts this to one side. In spring, the north part of the earth is going to tilt toward the sun, and it's getting warmer. So we're, getting, we're like 
remember if you ever been out in the really cold and somebody makes a bonfire and you can go up to it and get nice and warm? That's what the earth is doing. It's tipping right to the warm sunshine. And that's why we have spring. When does it begin? It begins when the earth has a big belt on. And when that belt is called the equator, goes is right level with the sun, that is the spring equinox. And that's when spring comes. And look at the rainbow that came, because we know springtime has rain, doesn't it? What are the first signs of spring? Little things start to sprout. Look at this one. It's even sprouting with a little crystal of snow on top. <laughs> it pushed the snow up. It does as a snow flower. What do the animals do in the spring? Well, they're hungry because they haven't eaten very much in the winter. It's hard to find food under the snow, or some of them have been hibernating. And look at this bear. That's a grizzly bear. He's hungry. They want to eat and they want to find food. Uh-oh, who's this? It's a stinky skunk, isn't it? That's right. And who's this? Yep, those are cottontail rabbits. We have those on the Grimes Farm. In fact, we have both of these things on the Grimes Farm. Why do animals migrate? Some birds get too cold in the winter, and so they fly south. But today, do you know what this is? This is a robin, and today my front yard was full of robins because they know it's spring, and they're eating the crab apples. Only one. Well, that's good. That's spring. What do people do in the spring? She's planting flowers. People are happy. It's finally spring. All right. Now, here's a little guy who thought spring was coming. His name is Fletcher. What kind of animal is Fletcher? A fox. A fox. Is this going to be a true story? No. How can you tell? Because... Why? Maybe. Let's see what happens. So, the woods were full of chirping, bustling, sing-song sounds of spring. Fletcher bounced along with his nose in the air, sniffing the just-burst buds of flowers and playing chase with butterflies, with his head spinning with sights and sounds. He's happy it's spring. Pretty soon we'll have green grass and flowers like that. He tumbled happily down the hill into the sunny orchard, but when he picked himself up from the ground, he couldn't believe his eyes. Uh-oh, what's he going to see? A soft breeze danced through the branches carrying snowy flakes. Snow! So late in the spring, thought Fletcher, it will be too cold for the buds and the butterflies. There's no time to lose. See all these things coming down in the spring? You know what they really are? They're really little bits of flowers, but he thinks it's snow, so he thinks it's going to be too cold. And so he runs, looking for someone to tell. He trotted back up the hill and passed some birds cuckooing in a bush, and he said, You came too soon. It's going to be cold. I've been down to the orchard, and there's more snow on the way. And the birds said, Well, we should fly back south, but first we must tell Porcupine. He's just coming out of his bed of leaves. He needs to snuggle back down or he'll freeze. So they go over to Porcupine. Fletcher and the birds found Porcupine stretching and scritch scratching. There's snow on the way, panted Fletcher. I saw it in the orchard. It'll be too cold for butterflies. The birds will need to fly south again and you must hide away. Then I should crawl back into my bed, snuffled Porcupine sadly. But first we must tell Squirrel that he needs to hunt for food. He's eaten all his winter store of nuts. He needs to find some more. Fletcher and the birds and Porcupine found Squirrel scampering after sunbeams. Snow is blowing in from the orchard, gasped Fletcher. It will be too cold for butterflies and birds. They, they're going to have to fly south. <gasps> oh dear, said Squirrel, all my stores are gone. But before I hunt for more, we need to tell rabbits to munch as much grass as they can before the snow falls. So here they all go. The rabbits were rolling down the hill next to their burrow. Stop playing, cried Fletcher. There's snow blowing in from the orchard. It will be too cold. 
Okay, said the rabbits, but before we eat, they said, staggering dizzily to their feet, let's go play in the snow. So the rabbits hippity hop, ploppity plop down the hill through the woods. They were chased by squirrel, porcupine, the birds, and a bouncy, full of importance fox, all the way to the orchard, where the ground was white with, was it snow? Look, with blossoms, blossoms bobbing in the branches, blossoms blowing in the breeze, blossoms blanketing the ground, and not a snowflake to be found. Those are blossoms, not snow, silly fox, the animals cried. Fletcher blinked, can you blink your eyes? <laughs> he rubbed his eyes, feeling very silly, but then the animal scooped up paws full and claws full of blossoms from the ground and covered him with a tickly shower of fluttering white petals. Fletcher and his friends ran and played between the trees until at last they all collapsed in the blossoms. And that was the end of that. It didn't snow after all. The birds fluttered back to their branch with blossoms for their nest. Porcupine snuffled off with blossoms on his, on his um, prickles. And the squirrel went chasing up and down the tree after the snow white petals. And the rabbits bounced back up the hill with blossoms to brighten up their burrow. And, oh, look at that beautiful picture. But Fletcher just lay smiling in his soft bed of petals and looked up at the beautiful trees. That's a better story. And now let's see about this one. <clears throat> this is spring. Hooray for spring. Look what he's wearing. Is he wearing summer clothes? Yeah, can we wear this today? We need a little more clothes on than this, don't we? He says, hooray for spring. That looks better. He has a shirt on that covers up his arms. Hooray for spring. What do you see in this picture that tells you it's springtime? Meadow. Yes. What animals do you see that look like spring? Ants. Yeah. Bunnies. Yeah. Would ants like it if it were snowing? No. How about bees? No. These guys like the spring. Oh, there's a little mouse. He's going to eat some clover. Hooray for spring. Hooray for spring. I hop, I skip, I fly on my swing. I sing a cloud song, I dance a leaf dance, I lie on my tummy and talk to the ants. I leap a big leap, jumpity jump. I watch for a rabbit, thumpity thump. Spring tickles my fingers and puddles my toes, it breezes sweet smells past my wiggly nose. I run to my garden, I plant tiny seeds, I spy red-winged blackbirds on tall, stringy weeds. I wiggle with the worm. Can you wiggle like a worm? <laughs> I giggle with the goose. He's feeding the goose some bread. I peek between the rushes and pretend there's a moose. Oh my goodness. I pretend there's a moose, but he's only a mouse scampering, skittering home to his house. I pick yummy berries. I lick lemon ice. Springtime is wildly, deliciously nice. I twist and I twirl like a kite on a string. Ooh, that looks fun, doesn't it? I'm swinging, I'm singing, I'm winging to spring. <laughs> and he jumped in his water. Well, pretty soon we'll get to swim outside, but not today. Okay, here is Spring is Here. This one's about a little, who's this? Cow. A little calf, yep, a baby cow. Spring is here, the snow melts, the earth is fresh, the grass sprouts. We don't have grass sprouting yet, do we? The flowers bloom. The grass grows. Oh, look, he's lying down in all that soft grass. The winds blow. Uh-oh. 
She lost her hat. The storms rage. We're going to have some April showers, aren't we? The quiet harvest arrives. Harvest? That's in the fall. That's after spring. Uh oh, snow falls. That's winter. <gasps> the children play. Now it's winter, isn't it? The world is hushed. There's so much snow, only the puppy dog came out to play. The world is white. Oh, whose ear is that? Maybe the calf, yep. The snow melts. The calf has grown. He's bigger. And look, he has little tiny horns. Spring is here. So it happens again and again. All right. Let's see what happens to the trees when spring comes, shall we? Let's see what happens to trees in spring. The tree wakes up. It's spring. The days grow longer. The sun warms the soil. The snow melts. See, they still have a little snow, just like we do. But the flowers are blooming. It's time for the trees to wake up. This tree doesn't have any leaves, does it? Let's see what happens. Oh, they get little buds on every branch. It says, this tree did not grow all winter. It was all just like that. No leaves, no flowers. But now it sprouts buds for leaves and buds for flowers. Oh, look at what the flowers did. Some buds become flowers and some become leaves. The leaves collect sunlight. Trees use sunlight to make food for themselves. Oh, look at that. What is that? What part of the tree is that? What is it? <laughs> what can you tell us? The roots, yep. Roots collect spring rain and trees need water to grow. The rain wets the soil, the tree grows strong, and now look at it. It has lots of flowers, doesn't it? Look, bees visit its flowers, birds nest in the crown. Oh, and soon summer will come and the tree will make fruit. What kind of fruit does this tree have? Can you tell what kind of fruit that is? Cherries. Cherries. That looks delicious, doesn't it? Favorite. Is that your favorite? <laughs> Do you like cherries? This is Flora's surprise. What is Flora? Can you tell what she is with her long ears? A bunny. A bunny. Yep. Let's see her surprise. Oh, we can tell this is a spring book because it had flowers. Flora's family loved their garden. You can tell from what they're wearing, it's still a little bit cold out, but they have all the things ready to garden. What do they have? What tools do you see? Shovel? Yep. Yep. Yeah, you got it. A shovel, a rake, some seeds. Nora planted a huge amaryllis. Cora planted 20 pink tulips. Be careful, Flora, said her sisters. See, they're planting all those things in a row. In the little babies in the wheelbarrow still. Sam planted lettuce. Tom planted sunflowers. Max sprinkled alfalfa seeds on a wet towel. Don't touch, Flora, said her brothers. Flora must be the littlest one. She doesn't get to plant, does she? Why don't you grow something, said Flora's dad. And he gave her a little pot to grow something. Some pretty flowers, said Flora's mom. Flora planted a small brick. She put a brick in her pot. I'm growing a house, said Flora. Can you grow a house? No. Your brick won't grow as quickly as my alfalfa sprouts, said Max, or as well as my lettuce, said Sam, or as tall as my sunflowers, said Tom. It's not a brick, it's a house, said Flora. She thinks, and there it is, sitting there with the little brick sticking out the top. Do you think she'll grow a house? No. Up sprang Cora's tulips and Nora's amaryllis, How's your brick doing, Flora? 
asked Nora and Cora. It's not a brick, it's a house, said Flora. Every night for a week, they ate Sam's lettuce with a garnish of Max's sprouts. How's your brick, Flora? <clears throat> asked Tom. It's not a brick, it's a house, said Flora. Nora's amaryll amaryllis burst open and Cora's tulips were beautiful and Flora poked at her house, hoping it would grow. Flora put her house outside beside Tom's spectacular sunflowers, but nothing happened. Her house wasn't growing. I think your brick is dead, said Sam. It's not a brick, said Flora. It's a house. Yep, and look, she's crying because they're making fun of her and her house. Winter came and the snow fell and still nothing grew. See her peeking out the window at her little house? It's not growing yet, is it? Do you think it will? Let's see. Then one day spring came back and Flora's family came out in their wheelbarrow. Look, yelled Flora, my house! For Flora's brick had grown into a perfect house. Whose, whose house is on that brick? A birdhouse. Yeah, a bird knew that, and she put her house there. Flora finally had her house, didn't she? That's a good story. And finally, we have one more story called Tops and Bottoms. And there's a big bear, and he's kind of sleepy and lazy, isn't he? Well, let's see what he does. This is a funny book because it opens this way. Look at all the different things you can grow in a garden. Can you tell what some of those are? Yams, carrots, kale. Yeah, I think you're right. Beets, carrots, kale. How about radishes? Have you ever had radishes? They're red and kind of spicy. Let's see what this, oh, look how they grow. They grow under the ground, and all we see on top are the leaves, right? Well, let's see what happens with this crazy bear. Look, there he is sleeping again. He's kind of lazy. It says, once upon a time there lived a very lazy bear who had lots of money and lots of land, but he was too lazy to work. And then there were rabbits, a whole family of rabbits, and they were hungry. They didn't have anything to eat. so. Father Rabbit went out to see the bear. And he said, hey, Mr. Bear. Look, he had to take him by the nose and talk to him because he was so sleepy. He's waking him up. He said, can I use your land? I'll do all the work if you'll let me use your land to plant a garden. And the bear said, okay, we'll split it 50-50. And the rabbit was so smart. He said, I'll take the bottoms and you take the tops. So what's that rabbit gonna get? Remember what the bottoms look like? The rabbit gets all the things rabbits love and the bears just get the leaves, right? <laughs> well, but the silly bear was so lazy, he didn't even think about it. So the rabbit family got so busy and they planted and they took care of the garden and they watered it. And what did the bear do? He was sleeping, he's lazy. And then, oh look, oh the garden's growing. All those leaves are coming up. And what's the bear doing? Sleeping. And here's the family gathering all those beautiful vegetables they grew. Look how much stuff they have. They're not going to be hungry anymore, are they? So they got all their vegetables and they took the tops off. Here they are taking the tops off. And they gave all the tops to the bear. And what do you think the bear did? When he woke up, he said, look at him. Hey, that's not fair. All I have is a bunch of old leaves and look what they have all those beautiful vegetables. So the rabbit said, okay, next time 
you get the bottoms and I'll take the tops. So they tried it again. And the rabbit family got really busy planting. And what did the bear do? Sleep. And now, up came the new things again. All they are, and the bear's still sleeping. And the rabbit family took care of all the weeds and they watered the plants. And then when it came time to harvest, it was lettuce and broccoli, all the things that grew on top. And they gave the bear the roots. Uh-oh, do bears like roots? I don't know. And the bear woke up and he saw the pile of roots and he said, hey, that's not fair. They took all the broccoli and the cauliflower, all those yummy things, and they left me with just the roots. So they said, okay, let's see what they said this time. The bear went back to sleep and the hare and his family went to work. Let's see what their plan was. You plant this field again, hare, and you've tricked me twice, and now you owe me one season of both tops and bottoms. You're right, poor old bear, sighed hare. It's only fair that you get both tops and bottoms this time. It's a done deal. So they went to work and they planted some more. And what did the bear do? He never learned his lesson. He didn't wake up to take care of them. So Bear went back to sleep and Hare and his family went to work. They planted and watered and weeded and watered and weeded some more. And as the bear slept, the crops grew. And when it was time for the harvest, the hare called on, wake up Bear, time to, this time you get the tops and the bottoms. See, he's trying to wake that old bear up and he's not waking up. Let's see what they, oh, look what they planted. What did they plant? There in front of Bear's house lay a high field of corn. Hare and his family yanked up every corn stalk. Hare tugged off the roots at the bottom and the tassels at the top, and he put them in a pile for Bear. He only got the roots and the tassels on the corn, and they got to take the corn home. The bear still got tricked, didn't he? By now, the bear was wide awake. That's it, Hare, he hollered. From now on, I'll plant my own crops and take the tops, the bottoms, and the middles. Hare and his family swooped up the corn and hopped down the road toward home. There they go with all the corn. Bear never again slept through a season of planting and harvesting. Hare brought back his, bought back his land with the profit from the crops, and he and Mrs. Hare opened a vegetable stand. So now they have so many vegetables, they can sell them. <laughs> that was a good story. It takes a little work to grow a garden, doesn't it? That's right. <laughs>